Hey guys, Aaron here with a full review of OS X Lion. So it's finally out, and of course Apple says that it's the most advanced desktop operating system ever. They keep saying that there's over 250 new features, and while some of these are big features like Mission Control and Launchpad, others are just kind of small things like the ability to have non-year birthdays on your calendar, and uh, things like changing backgrounds of different spaces. But uh, either way, I've included a link of the full uh, feature list from Apple below in the description, so feel free to hit that up and scroll through all of their features. Uh, but I've split the video into various sections just so that it's easier to get to what you need. So first is the first impressions and installation, and this is just kind of like what I first noticed and things like that. And then you have the core features, which are the main differences that kind of separate it from any previous iteration of OS X. Then you have the speed of the system compared to previous uh, versions like Snow Leopard, and then you have things like compatibility, and then the conclusion. So, first let's go over my first impressions and the installation. Uh, installation is super easy, you really just download it from the Mac App Store, and uh, you run the installer. But this of course means that you have to have access to the Mac App Store to begin with, which means that you're running Snow Leopard. Um, you might be able to burn it to a DVD, and actually I've made a video on how to do this, but uh, this was during the developer seed and not the actual release, so uh, you could always try it. I'll include the video link in the description so you can click it and try it out if you want. But installation itself, you just run it, uh, computer reboots, you pick a drive, you hit next a few times, you reboot again, and you're in line. So, first impression once you're in line is that it looks a lot like Snow Leopard, ex except for this new default uh, Galaxy background. And I guess, in the end, it shouldn't be that different from Snow Leopard itself, because this is 10.7. It's not something like 11 or something like that, you know. So this is really still a next iteration of OS X. It's not a whole new operating system itself. Once you're actually using it, you're going to notice that all of the multi-touch gestures are completely different. So when I started using Lion, I was really confused because I thought that I messed up the installation because uh, up was down, left was right, but apparently this is the natural scrolling style as defined by Apple. And you, you may not believe me, I didn't even think this was true myself, but apparently this is how you've been scrolling in iOS on your, all your tablets, on all your smartphones. Apparently this is what I've been doing, I had no idea, but yeah, scrolling down makes stuff move up instead of down being down and up being up. So it's much like a real sheet of paper where if you moved your finger down on it, it would move up. So this was really an annoying change for me. So I just went into the trackpad in system preferences and I basically changed everything to how I like it. I switched the scrolling back to normal and I made more comfortable gestures for mission control and launchpad, app expose, etc. Oh, and apparently but now dashboard is an ugly space instead of something that overlays on your screen, I turn that off right away, but some people might find it useful as a space. I don't see how it would be useful as a space, but yeah. Other than that, there isn't really any huge initial impression that would make you go, oh, this is Lion, but it's still very much OS X and feels very much like Snow Leopard with a bunch of new features. So next we'll go over the core features of OS X Lion that really separate it from any previous iteration of OS X. So there's a lot, but these are the things that I think really make Lion Lion. So first is Mission Control, which basically replaces spaces in Exposé. It takes both of them and kind of jams it into one nice thing. And basically it allows you to deal with multiple windows at once while dealing with multiple spaces at once. It can get a bit messy, um, but it's preferred to dealing with windows and spaces separately, so it's a welcome addition. Uh, it looks great and it's really efficient when you have a really messy workflow and you just need to deal with uh, lots and lots of documents. So very nice to use, the multi-touch gestures make the workflow very nice because you can easily switch between spaces now and stuff like that. Um, I've also made a video on kind of the basics of, well actually all of the aspects of mission control and you can check that out. Uh, in the link below too. So next, uh, Launchpad, and Launchpad is great for those who don't use shortcuts and don't like accessing the applications folder. So people are complaining that Launchpad was making Lion too much like iOS, but I really don't think so. It's just a quick way of launching applications without cluttering up your desktop or searching through folders. So personally, I've used the Spotlight and Quicksilver for launching my applications, but for those who want like 
a easy like clicking way of accessing their applications launchpad is quick and easy so it's not as customizable as I'd like you can remove certain icons and you can rename them and put them into folders but that's about it there's certain things you can't even remove like the finder and all that stuff so um, it's not that customizable and basically you can't really change how it looks or anything like that but um, I guess if you want a quick way of launching applications and sorting them this is a good way but I just wish that you could kind of do more with it so now apparently you can resume everything where you were um, even after full complete restart not even just sleep but you can restart completely and everything will be where it was positions of windows will be where they were and just everything will be exactly the same so um, it seems to work with even third-party applications so very nice feature uh, might do full reboots a lot more often because of this so next we have autosave inversions so autosave saves a copy every hour and this might seem like a really long time but I think it's a good amount because if you saved every few minutes or every time you made a change this would basically lead to lots and lots of copies but this is gonna save people from a lot of pain just because you know a lot of people I know don't even like ever save until they're done and while an hour is a pretty long time having an autosave every hour is better than losing everything completely right so awesome feature and versions is awesome too so it basically takes it's like time machine for all your documents and it basically only saves the changes so it's really space efficient too and basically it allows people to go back to previous versions of their files and you can like do different cool things like locking versions or like deleting older versions locking things from having version control and things like that so these are awesome features and I think these because they're so built in it's gonna save people from a lot of like crying and headaches and stuff like that so next is an awesome feature called airdrop you're no longer going to have to email a hundred megabyte file to yourself or send it over MSN messenger or something like that um, it's awesome and really easy to use and it went off without a hitch when I tested it so you'll literally just activate airdrop you'll see the other computer with airdrop activated and you'll drag the folder over there and it'll appear in the downloads folder it's that simple you're identified by your username and icon and you know it's really as simple as dragging and dropping your folder to the other person and I'm surprised people actually that it took so long to make this you know because sending an email so large to someone next to you has been a huge problem for people since you know the beginning of the internet basically and now there's finally a way to just you know drop a folder to someone next to you so I absolutely love this and I think this is a great feature um, yeah okay so those are just the features that I think make line line I'm sure there's a lot more and you can feel free to talk about them in the comments if you want but that was basically it next we're gonna go on to the speed and so according to lots and lots of people Snow Leopard is way faster at most things than Lion. Lion beats Snow Leopard in a few areas but yeah that's about it but you have to remember that this is an initial release and aside from that there's a ton of other stuff running in the background like mission control and all that stuff so there's of course going to be optimizations as time goes along they're going to send patches and bug fixes and stuff like that but you know Lion really has a bunch of extra stuff running in the background so this understandably takes up system resources so you're understandably going to be a bit bogged down if your computer isn't all that new but that being said um, your computer can't really be that old if you're running Lion because you'll at least be on a Core 2 Duo because um, that's when Apple switched to the Intel processor so you can't even use this on a really old Mac anyways right but if it's a Core 2 Duo you might feel a bit of lagging but you know on these newer i7s, i5s, even an i3 you're probably not gonna feel any difference from Snow Leopard at least nothing like the benchmarks will certainly be different which is what people saw but you probably won't feel that much of a difference in Lion just because the difference is pretty negligible so now let's talk compatibility so Rosetta apps are gone yep nothing to be said about that they're just done with and yeah it's kinda sad if you own a lot of Rosetta apps but what can you do but um, all apps from Snow Leopard didn't seem to have a problem online I haven't noticed any issues yet and everything has been running normally I haven't really had any compatibility issues at all so so now the conclusion 
Um, there's really too many features to really go over everything and things that are important to me and I that I think make 7 may not be the same for you. But, uh, you know, there's other additional things like multi-edge window resizing and stuff like that. But um, other than that, it's not really a game-changing update to OS X. If anything, it feels like a vast improvement to an existing system rather than something that took like a revolutionary leap forward. And that's understandable. This is 10.7 once again. It's not the next operating system. This is building on OS X. Um, but for the most part, changes are significant and hefty and will be carried down to the user. Um, like, you know, the multi-edge window resizing is something people have been asking for for a long time, and this is something that, I guess, is very important to some people. Um, you know, there's actually, I think, an $8 app in the App Store that's really popular because people really do want multi-edge window resizing. But, yeah, it's in there now. But, you know, for $30, no matter what you think, like, you might be like, oh, this isn't that big of a change from Snow Leopard. It's $30, and you just download it from the App Store, and you just, like, run it, and everything does, you know, everything updates automatically. You don't have any compatibility issues. Um... To me, it makes sense. It's 30 bucks, you know, just just get it. It's not that big of a deal. So, um, the only problem is those people who don't have Snow Leopard, they're not going to be able to update to Lion because they don't have access to the Mac Store. But once again, you could try burning it to a CD. But no guarantee that's going to work. But once again, this is $30. I don't see a reason not to upgrade no matter what you think about these 250 features when it's so easy. You know, staying up to date is nice and for thirty dollars all of these features you know improved workflow and all that stuff it's just too easy to pass up so you know i have to give this like at least a four or four point five out of five because come on it's so simple to do it packs a ton of new features in there um, yeah i'm absolutely loving it so thanks for watching be sure to tell me what you think and maybe even tell me what you th think are the actual core features in your mind and uh, be sure to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.